the average score for what was it for technology companies? 53? Yeah. So basically, they're saying you suck the least. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me with HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Hi, I'm Ginger McClish from St. Louis, Missouri, medical oncology hematology consultants, and you are listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. Thanks for that intro. All right, let's get rolling here. You ready, Donna? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So I'm David Sims with HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. And Donna, you are in recovery mode. <laughs> yes, I am. I so spent, IT term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't properly calculate my my recovery uh, time objectives <laughs> based on inflammation. Now, I spent New Year's Eve having surgery. It was a convenient time for my business schedule, not my social schedule, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, for those of you who know what a U-triple-P is, you feel my pain. I did that plus had my broken nose fixed and my messed up sinuses repaired. I had three surgeries all at one time just to get it done, brother. Wow. I had no idea that HIPAA was so brutal. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think a lot of that comes from uh, growing up on the farm playing basketball, softball, kickball. and you know, They used what, you for all those, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to wrestle? All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's good to have you almost back to normal. Even though I'm getting as close as I can. Yeah, I don't know that you'll ever be normal, but you'll get there. <laughs> normal for me. It's all relative. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. So, uh, where are you going to be here coming up shortly? Yeah, really. I've got to recover because I'm speaking January 23rd in uh, Macon, Georgia, Middle Georgia MGMA. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, as we record this, what, a week away, because we are recording like right before we release, which is odd for us. Yeah. And uh, working on a special deal uh, for April time frame in Savannah for the Society of OMS Administrators, going to do a little uh, pre-conference workshop mm-hmm. uh, that we're working on, which is really kind of cool. I'm looking forward to doing in uh, savannah plus uh, seeing all those guys those are some partying bunch i like those folks <laughs> uh but of course the boot camp yep. comes before that i know yeah we already uh already got some people going through the shopping cart <laughs> signing up yeah so, i mean you know get that early bird special because it ends february 20th so we definitely yeah. want to you know let people get in there and get get a hold of that yep early bird ends february 20th this should give you plenty of time. Everybody wanted to have the dates. We put them out. We published them. So all of you who said, I need to know in advance, I need the dates, all of this kind of stuff, there you go. Mm -hmm. Sign up. Come join us either March 20th, 21st, 22nd, or our second session is going to be May 15th, 16th, and 17th. We look forward to seeing you there or here as it may be. (laughs) Yeah, we haven't got anything on the there yet. <laughs> no, no. So there you have it on the there, but we'll see you here right. in March and May. Come so on if down. Need, if you need any more information about that, it is at thehippocamp.com, or you can go to helpmewithhippo.com slash bootcamp to get all the details. Bootcamp. Look, I'm right. ready. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right, so before we dive into today's episode, if you like today's episode, make sure you share it out, social media or wherever else you want to share it. Put it up share it with one other person. Yeah. Or, you you know, put tell it on two a people. They big old, people. Put it on a big old sheet and hang it over an overpass somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a picture if you do. Right. Yeah, please do. <laughs> All right, so today we're going we're gonna to dive a little deeper into passwords. We, we talked about this on on our predictions for 2019 about you know, passwords are going to be changing or somebody's going to come up with something that's you know better than the typical passwords we're using or whatever. So we want to talk about that because I think that passwords are going to still be a necessary evil 
for the online and digital world. But yes. there are also lots of tools out there to help us, you know, deal with that and and get through all that pressure to come up with a secure password. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it it's one of those every single time you turn around, there's somebody telling you, I'm not going to do a password more than eight characters. I'm not going to do it, period. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the only thing I can say to them is your data will not be secure, period. That's all we can say. And the uh, group, uh, the folks at LastPass have done a report that they published the 2018 Global Password Security Report. And that gave me the idea of us putting together a little discussion because they said, you know, had some great information. But the important thing is that they pointed out that they were trying to do because they have so many organizations that use their tools and their different sizes and types and industries around the world. And they said, look, we're going to try to put together something that gives us some conclusions for the IT community at large to understand what's happening with passwords. Mm -hmm. And so there was some stuff that you would expect Anybody surprised healthcare sucks at it? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. We, we don't need another report telling us that, although this one did. Uh, <laughs> there's some, <laughs> there are some valuable lessons in here. And if you use LastPass, which David and I, both our companies use them. We've used them for years. I use the enterprise version. What do you, what do you use? Mm, I think it's, I think it's the one below that. Teams. Yeah, I believe so. I don't know. I just uh, use I mean, it. <laughs> I just use it. I just use it. I don't know which version it is. <laughs> uh, anyway, you, you know, there's family version, team version, enterprise version. I've been on the enterprise version since they introduced the enterprise version. So, been around for a long time, and it's one of the top players. And granted, there are others. And yes, there will be plenty of security people who will tell us that we are wrong. <laughs> but that's not what we're here for. We're here to say that's what we use. Uh, and we don't get anything for saying that that's what we use. But one of the features that they have is where you can, it runs what they call a security score. Mm-hmm. And it evaluates all of the uh, data that you have stored, all of your sites and notes and stuff that you store in LastPass. And it looks for duplicate passwords or sites they consider vulnerable because they have, you know, they're on the long list of breaches. They're on the long list of publicly disclosed data breaches, which that is a long list. We're talking what? (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) Yeah. The number of weak passwords that you have, those where they calculate the strength, the average strength of all passwords, The strength of shared passwords, because that's a cool feature, is that you can share passwords with other folks. Mm -hmm. And then multi-factor authentication. So they total all that stuff up and look at, you know, this is what your score is. So uh, I don't know about you, but uh, by the time, you know, we keep, we have to keep client things in there and... um, yeah, we family things because Lord knows when my dad will mash the wrong button again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or I'll be on the beach and he calls, "What's my password to my email?" <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have all that in there, and it does drive me nuts because it messes with my total security score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have that too. <laughs> yeah, because we keep we keep passwords for client things, and sometimes it's passwords that. You know, they've created and then they share the information back to us. So we have it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like having it in there. I want to be able to ignore it to say, look, that's not my choice. (laughs) Um, And hopefully someday LastPass will give us that feature. But I still scored a 67%, which is still in the top 11% worldwide. Wow. And if I could jettison all that dead weight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'd be rocking and I'd be so happy, but I cannot. Yeah. Wow. So what about you? Um, I don't remember the exact score, but I was 80 something, 84, 87, something like that. 
Yeah, your family but, isn't as big as mine. But I will, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that the LastPass account that I am using now is fairly new. It's only like a year old. So <laughs> if I uh, if I did the the other account, it would probably be worse because there's you know probably eight years worth of stuff in there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm constantly battling just trying to clear out old stuff and making sure. Because, you know, with GDPR, you can find these old sites that you used to go to. And part of GDPR is they're supposed to let you delete your account. Yeah. And so you can go there, and if you still can log in, delete that account, and then get rid of it out of LastPass. That that alone raised my score five percentage points, getting Hmm. rid of old crap. But they take those numbers from, you know, okay, we look good when you compare it to (laughs) what everybody else did. Because technology companies, okay, this was funny when I read this part. Since many technology companies need to comply with privacy and data laws, it's not surprising they lead the pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. You and I know. That's not that big of a deal, right? (laughs) (laughs) Not when you look at the score. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the average score in these industries that they looked at, the average score for, what was it for technology companies? 53? Yeah. So basically they're saying you suck the least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I felt really good about my 67 when I saw the average for IT companies was 53. Mm-hmm. And I haven't looked at our company average. That's what I should do. But I'm sure it's probably in that same frame number. But Mm -hmm. they looked at all the different industries. And surprisingly, the, quote, heavily regulated industries like banking, health, insurance, and government are not achieving comparable or even superior average security scores. And given that those industries, in particular health, are more frequently targeted by attackers, we would expect to see higher commitments to password security. Hmm. Yes, you would. (laughs) If you aren't in this arena, you know, if you're in this industry, we know. But health had an average score of 49 out of 100. Yep. So that's that's only four below. I know. Like I said. You suck the least. You suck the least. Because <laughs> everybody sucked in this thing. I mean, when the, I when the top score is 53, you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody's at least, you know, 80 or above. I mean, no, everybody, if we do, if we were in school, we'd be failing, right? Everybody's got an F. <laughs> yeah. And when you look at the, like on on my stuff where I can look at the scores that have to do with the passwords that I use. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm scoring like 100% on complex password strength, right. password strength. Healthcare scored an average of 51 on the strength of the password, just that piece. Mm-hmm. So no wonder we're getting hacked, people. Yeah. You don't even have to work hard to hack password one, two, three. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, on the flip side of that, I do understand, though, because in healthcare, you're going in and out of these systems, you're working quickly, you've got to make life and death decisions in some cases, not all of them. I remember laying there after my surgery in the hospital watching the nurses trying to get into the little drug cabinet <laughs> to get me my stuff, and they're like having to bang the card and enter a code and then, you know, sigh and have to enter a password. You know, so things weren't working smoothly for them at that time, but it was, you know, a holiday. So (laughs) all (laughs) the people that are normally there were gone. But it is harder, particularly in the healthcare environment, because of the work that's being done, Mm -hmm. you know, in financial and legal and and these other ones. you, You log in and you do your work and, you know. You're yeah, good li- to go. Lives aren't necessarily at stake, and you're trying to really hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you're not going in and out. You know, healthcare has so many different systems now. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, yes, it's a goal to integrate them, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, 
Uh, I mean, the vendors don't make it easy by themselves because they don't want to integrate, you know, themselves. And that it's a long, long story. But I do understand healthcare's issue with this. Mm. However, it does not take away the security problem that is created by it. So while this is a problem that is unique to healthcare because of the access that needs to occur quickly, it does not mean that you just don't do it. You find a solution to the problem is what you have to do. And sometimes it takes multiple tries to find what works in your environment. Mm -hmm. But first of all, one of the things that you do to protect things, and this is one that we, we really do talk about, is getting multi-factor authentication going. All right. You, you can pick up any time that you want to <laughs> help assist out. <laughs> okay. All right. So multi-factor authentication, I'll explain it just in case people don't understand what it is. Uh, I've, I have since learned a really good way to talk about multi-factor authentication where people are like, oh, cool, I get it. <laughs> All right, and, great. And and what what people don't realize is we've been using multi-factor authentication for a very, very long time. And I would venture to say everybody listening has used multi-factor authentication. And it comes in the form of using the good old ATM machine, right? <laughs> pull, ah. up to, pull up to the ATM machine. You, you use something that you have, which is your card, and something you know, which is your PIN. So that's multi-factor authentication. Same thing that we're doing nowadays with our phones. We're using a password that we know, and then we're using something we have, which is our device, which has an, a code on it. So multi-factor authentication, we've been using it since, I don't know, 70s. <laughs> I know. When was the first ATM withdrawal you did? I know. So yeah, we've been using, as a society, we've been using multi-factor authentication for a very long time, and it's not anything new. No. But it is something that, you know, we we look at all of these cases. Uh, you know, I'm I'm reading, which is something that I can do in recovery really well. <laughs> is read a lot, and there's so many announcements of data breaches related to phishing attacks mm -hmm. because people have all this PHI in their encrypted email, and then they get phished and give away their username and password to their email account, and within seconds of that happening, all of that data in that email account is downloaded somewhere else, mm -hmm. whether it's Vietnam or Ukraine. It doesn't matter. It, you know, it, it could be Tampa. It's getting downloaded somewhere else, and at that moment, you have data exfiltration and you have a data breach under HIPAA. Right. Period. And that two-factor authentication, turning it on on your email accounts, that alone would prevent almost all of those cases that we see reported. Yeah. Don't and you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I use, I have Google Authenticator, which is one of the two-factor authentication apps, but the one I use the most is, is from LastPass. So right. the LastPass Authenticator uh, with with certain things that it does, it will actually just pull up a screen and, and you just click, you know, approve or deny. So yeah. you don't you don't have to grab the code and, and punch it all in and all that. So they're certainly making some of the multi factor authentication stuff a, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely essential to solving a lot of these problems. Now, granted, it's not perfect, and we no. know that. No. You know, there are ways to hack it. There are ways to get around it. There are ways to break it. However. Yeah, but you can't say, oh, just because you can kick my door in, I'm not going to lock it anymore. <laughs> You're right. You know, that's what, where people ask us, you know, well, if everything's out there and everybody's getting hacked and, you know, it's so bad, why do I, you know, why not just give up? And I'm like, well, if you live in a bad neighborhood, does that mean... You don't put any locks on the doors. Right. <laughs> I mean, because it's this, you know, criminals do the same thing online as they do physically, which is, you know, physically a guy's going to walk up, he's going to pull the door handles of every door in the parking lot until he find one, finds one open. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing online. They're going to try the 
the the whatever passcodes or passwords or whatever, and they're just going to try to see if they can find the easiest thing to get into. Yep, it's like they say, you know that thing. You don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the other guy <laughs> running yeah. from the bear with you. I know. <laughs> That's why I always go camping with big old out of shape people. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were not an easy target, there are so many easy targets out there, they'll move along. Right. And that's, you know, we're a long way from it not being easy for most of these criminals to, to get things. And it, it, email especially, mm -hmm. please, oh, yeah. on your email. Add multi-factor authentication everywhere you can, but particularly on email and financials. Mm -hmm. It'll yeah, save you. If I can get in your email, then and I can go and start trying to reset passwords all over the place and then check your email to see if you get something that resets the password for me. <laughs> oh, if they get your personal email, they can become you. And, oh, yeah. and I mean, I have a friend who's, at the point where he's going to have to get a new social security number and like the person he was has to disappear. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's, it's just awful. Um, you know, and he made some very simple mistakes that, uh, you know, ain't nothing I can do about it now, <laughs> but I feel sorry for him and everything that happened. But the other thing that you can do, and there are a lot of these out there, and everybody's seen it, particularly in healthcare. You go to the hospital, and people walk up, and they, you know, tap their badge, or they, you know, swipe their badge, and they're into the systems, and they're able to get into security, and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Those are great, and those are basically another type of two-factor authentication. You know, the badge is what gets you in, though. And those are quite uh, valuable badges. And right. you, you see those everywhere. And the, the big player in that market, in that single sign-on is what we call it, space for healthcare is Improvada. And you know, at HIMSS, how their space is like gigantic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we played with some of their toys when we were down there. <laughs> yeah, and they have all these demos, and they're great. But they are not cheap. They are priced because they are, you know, you know, they're they're the Tesla <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, kind of thing, and and you know, our clients want to buy a Hyundai, <laughs> so we don't <laughs> we don't have a lot of people that can afford the Improvada solution, and unless they're interested in bringing their solution further down to our you know world pricing, that's not going to change. <laughs> But the good news is there are other solutions out there. Yeah, now, we actually found tell, one. Yeah, yeah, we found you one. You tell them about Hems. these guys. We we found them a couple of years ago. It was funny. <laughs> so, so while we were at Hems, Donna went to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 True story. <laughs> and yeah, so in, literally, like in you know, we're talking about the booth size and all that. These you know, these guys are kind of in a side booth down an alley somewhere on <laughs> startup. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's the only way they can do it. And this guy walks up with a trench coat and says, you want one of these? <laughs> but no, that's not really what it was. But anyway, they had this product. It was called uh, Gatekeeper. And and they were, you know, showing how you plug it into the computer. And then when you get close to the computer, uh, it'll, you know, basically unlock the computer for you so you don't have to put a password in. And so we were looking at all that. And we was like, this is great. Unfortunately, it's probably too expensive. And then when the guy told us, you know, no, they're, they're this you know, this is the price on them. We were like, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is extremely affordable. Give me some information. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy, these is Untethered Labs. Shout out to those guys. And uh, we we have maintained connection with them. In fact, I have a one of their halberds laying on my desk right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I use it, you know, at my desk because you walk up and it prompts you for the pen and you type it in the four digit number and I mean I'm just configured on my little desktop. I don't have any big network or anything. Uh, but it makes it easy for me not to have to enter my one hundred percent scored <laughs> <laughs> password for my desktop and um and then when I walk yeah. away it automatically, you know, logs back off. So very much love uh their 
devices and happy to tell people about them. We'll have a link uh, at the website, but they have now come out with all kinds of other features that they didn't have back then. And uh, I think they're even coming out with a card soon. Uh, but, well, hey, Pearl, I'm sure you'll be listening. <laughs> uh, thanks for the stuff. And we really do enjoy their products. And, you know, it, give it a shot. And is it perfect? No. But it's got some great features. You can go to their website, watch the video. But it's a similar concept. You have to have that device. And then the computer that you're accessing has to be configured to accept that device. So it's pretty awesome. But still, you know, it's still two factors. You've got to have that original login to be able to use the device. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it, you know, I got the device, so now I can get in everywhere. Uh, you've got to, you know, be authenticated where you could actually sit down and log in somewhere for these things to actually work. Yeah. I love the feature where it logs you off automatically when you walk off from it. I know. I mean, how many times do we argue about that problem? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where they, they leave it logged on and it just does it as soon as you walk away, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, and then another one, uh, one of the things that was interesting in the last past report is they listed the websites that were like declining access. Uh, you know, there were fewer people signing up for these sites and more people signing up for these and some were the same between 2017 and 2018. And one of the rising ones was Okta. Hmm. which I've talked to those guys before. They are a cloud single sign-on solution. And they have some really cool stuff where their platform has pre-built in integration for thousands of apps. And then they also have APIs so that vendors can tie into the platform too. And that's great for, you know, all of the cloud-based stuff. Yeah. So um, there are other solutions, but none of them you know, will be the perfection, as my eye doctor clients tell me, retina scans are the most secure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, well, when you can get me some cheap ones, you let me know. <laughs> no, like a, you know, if you've watched the minority report, those aren't foolproof either. <laughs> yeah, really, just steal an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but... You know, I still see, you know, I was reviewing an assessment where the doctors just absolutely refuse to use anything longer than eight character passwords. <laughs> they say, no, we're not going to do it. And, you know, what am I, what can you say? So just for some fun, I, I put a link to a calculator site out there. And this one does where it was really cool. I don't know if you've ever been to that one, David, where <laughs> It lets you set, like, the date that you wanted uh, to simulate. So mm -hmm. whether you want to simulate 2015, but you can go all the way back to, like, 1982 and simulate how long it would take to crack a password hmm. and all the way up to 2020 and how long it would take to crack a password. So you get to see the speed that the you, you know, it's insane what the speed in the keys per second as far as what it can calculate. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I can't even tell you off the top of my head how many numbers it is, but it starts in 1982 at 8,346.4 keys per second, right? That's right. a number I can work with. Mm -hmm. In 2020, that number... <laughs> That number is 1704249 So, uh, wow. <laughs> what is that? 17 billion from 8,000. So, even what? if you want to set, oh, that password I got in 1999 that I'm still using. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, yeah. Here's, a, here's an example. I put a password in that sometimes I use. In 1982, it would have taken 19 millennia to break that password. Okay. In 2020, it would take nine years to break that password. <laughs> yeah. See, it's even catching up with you. So we went right? from 
We went from 19 millennia to nine years. That's pretty impressive. All right. So password one, two, three. <laughs> In 1982, it would take 39 jiffies. Jiffies? <laughs> jiffies. And, you know, it, it's, it, well, and 0.19 milliseconds in 2020. So. <laughs> 0.19 milliseconds. <laughs> it already knows that you're going to try it was to a blink yeah it knew before you entered it and uh for for those of you who really want to understand play with that and you'll see how easy it is and that it's not going to get better uh-uh. and that's the important thing so make it your new year's resolution that you're going to have more complex passwords Use a password manager. We're fans of LastPass. Dashlane's also good. There's others out there. Use a password manager, please, please, please. And then put two-factor authentication on the password manager. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And don't forget your password. <laughs> oh, God. Because you got to remember with these things, too, is, you know, if you lock yourself out of them, you can't get back, get back in them. Uh, yeah, but they give you some things in LastPass so that you have like people that you can designate mm-hmm. to help you get back in. Yeah. So there yeah. are ways, people. There are ways. <laughs> well, it goes back to our three rules of security, right? So That's n- right. number one, security is not convenient. Number two, security is not an option. And number three, security not should not unnecessarily impede. Thank you, David. I've finally gotten you to understand those. I'm so no. proud. How about that? What but, a student you are. <laughs> I is. <laughs> <I yield. laughs> <laughs> but the, if you, the thing about passwords is if you violate the first rule and make it too inconvenient, then people, people won't do it. They won't comply with it. They'll, you know, they'll just try to find some way around it. So even though it's not convenient, it can't be too inconvenient either. Right. It's, it's got to be a perfect balance between those three that is your triangle, and you're trying to balance it in the center. Sounds good. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Balancing the triangle. Yeah. All right. All right. So there you go. Passwords aren't going away. Nope. And until we have affordable retina scans uh, and ways to not get your eyeball plucked out, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to find a way to make these things work. So look at the alternatives, but make it your New Year's resolution to better secure your uh, accounts using complex passwords, password managers, two-factor authentication, gatekeeper, halberd, <laughs> octa, some. <laughs> just do all of it. Do some. Yeah. Do some. Don't just, you know, keep it because it's getting worse every day you don't do it. Mm-hmm. Is a day you're likely hacked again. Well, we've we've tried to get clients to kind of take the I call it the 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 fire alarm approach or the or the smoke alarm approach. You know, <laughs> twice twice a year you change the batteries in your smoke alarm. Yeah. Um, you know, t- typically when you when you change the time. So we try to mm-hmm. kind of do the same thing. Look, when time changes, your password needs to change. You know, it, at least that'll be something that kind of helps helps you remember that. You know, sometimes there are things on your computer, they'll tell you, hey, your password expired, especially the ones that force you. <laughs> the, pro- the problem that we're finding, though, and, and there's a term for this, and I can't, I can't remember it, but people will take their password and they'll just add a digit to it or they'll add a special character to it. So it's, it's fairly easy once you know the password to figure out what they changed it to mm-hmm. because they're, all they're doing is just, they're just adding one more thing to it. Or you know, it, it used to be something you know, one, now it's something two, then something three, then something four. I mean, it's easy to figure it out. Yeah. So. And it, it, we have lots of ways that we can try to give you ideas to create your own passwords that are complex. But if you use a password manager, you don't have to remember that many. That is right. I mean, I, I'm looking at my last pass right now. I have 780 passwords. Oh, Jesus, Pete. 780 different passwords. Fortunately, I only have to know that one. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. And, you know, I make them as long as I can make them. If, if the website will take a 50-character password, I'll put it in there. Whatever whatever I can do to make it as, as long as I can make it. But, you know, pass, I love it. I love password managers, especially whenever they'll pick the password and fill it in for you. Oh, yeah. 
can't beat it. And so we know that it's more important to have a long password. 14 characters or longer mm-hmm. yeah. is harder to break than a 10 character with, you know, exclamation points and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. We had a, <laughs> we had a <laughs> company that um, took over one of our old clients because we were turning them over to another IT company. And unfortunately, we do 32 character passwords on servers. <laughs> and it's like the guy's like, well, I need the credentials. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and Here you he, go. he cut the fool. You've got to be kidding me. You did this to me on purpose. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, no, no, we use 32 character passwords. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah. I mean, I understand it. It took him, you know, it took him all of two minutes to type it all in. But yeah, you know, it's security first. It exactly like whatever you do. I, I'm sure he went in and changed the password to password. <laughs> 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 but anyway, I digress. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. So that's our show for today, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, passwords aren't going away soon, and uh, neither are we. How about that? <laughs> so remember to follow us to share us out on social media. Rate us in our podcasting app. We need your help to spread the word. Make it your mission for 2019 to spread the word about Help Me With HIPAA. (laughs) So remember for Donna and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance, but it is about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.